What's going on guys? Big D here. Time to test another amp. So we're going to head over here to the uh, storage rack and just pick one kind of at random. So let's see what's up. As you can see, my storage rack over here is uh, starting to get a little messy. And I did actually pull out some before that I thought about using for today. This is a, I don't even know the brand, AL APC 602. This one was wrapped up. Most of my amps are wrapped up. Thought about that one. Thought about this SPL amp, Brad Owens, who is the vintage Alpine guy that does all the repairs. He sent this to me a while back because he was actually going to toss it. So we're going to do this one, but not today. And another one that kind of piqued my interest a little bit was this Rockford Punch 50X2 Power. This is a gray one. Um, but again, that's one that'll come. Now you guys may not like my selection here. But <laughs> this is what I chose. So interestingly enough, this amp I showed off on my channel. 10 years ago, I showed it off and talked about all the features and the settings and all that stuff. But I never did test it. So let's test this little baby Soundstream D100 II on the dyno. Find out what it's all about. As I've shown you guys before, I usually wrap up the amps just to protect them, you know, to make sure they don't get dinged and beat up. These amps are old. In this case, this one's from the early 1990s. So let me get it unwrapped and not talk at the same time, and then I'll come back to you. Here's that D100 version 2 which um, I'm gonna leave a link in the video description. You can see Steve Mead's channel, Mead916. He actually tested the first D100 on his channel a few years ago. The biggest difference from the one that he tested in this one was this one has the insert terminals, which are really nice. Soundstream really was a leader in amp connections back in the day. They didn't have those Molex plugs or anything. So these are really nice. They're all eight gauge for the plus 12 ground remote and all the channels. This is a two channel amp and it does have the Tiffany style RCAs too for way back in the day. That's really cool. This is really a basic amp, just a little two channel. Has these plugs on the bottom to go between stereo and mono. And you have some fuses here, these three amp fuses for the channels. And then you can switch it to four ohms or eight ohms bridge or two ohms, four ohms bridged. And we're not gonna stress this amp and go any lower than it's rated. It's only rated at two ohm stereo or four ohms mono. And the amp is old, so we're not gonna try to beat it up. But anyway, as you can see, not a whole lot to it. We'll open it up once we're done with the dyno test and take a look at the inside. There you have it. There's a power LED right between the uh, left and right jacks. I don't think I showed you here. So this is where you screw down the terminals for the amp. And these two holes right here or for the gain control, it has individual gain control for each channel. Very small screws down there to do that. If we pull out the 1990 Car Audio Electronics directory, we'll see sound stream section. The D100 250 watts by two gives all the different specs there. It was $349 1990. That's about $795 in 2022. Going back to the amp, dimensions wise, 7.5 inches for length, 6 inches for width, 2.1 inches for the height. Now let's get this amp all connected up so we can start the amp dyno test. So sit back and enjoy the connections. the amp connected let's flip the power switch red led is a good thing i think we're good to go 
As far as ratings go, the amp is rated 50 by 2 at 4 ohms, 70 by 2 at 2 ohms, or bridge mono 100 watts at 8 ohms, or 120 at 4 ohms. It's very odd that the 2 ohm stereo and the 4 ohm mono don't match up as they should. So I'm not sure either at 60 watts per channel at 2 ohms or 140 watts bridged. Either way, stereo test we're going to do at 1 kilohertz. So let's try it out here. Rated 50 watts by 2 at 14.4. Here we go, certified test first and 1% distortion, 58 and 55 watts at 14.42. Good job, Soundstream. This old amp. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point. And exactly the same, 58 and 55 watts right at 14.4 volts. Reset the dyno here for the dynamic track. 1 kilohertz pulse track simulating the IHF202 test. You can see here, 67 watts per channel, right at 14.44. It's a good deal. Now let's check out that efficiency. This is a class AB amp, so we don't expect a whole lot, but 63% is a little better actually than I expected. Two ohm stereo, it's rated 50 by two or 70 by two. We're gonna talk about that here. 70 by two when it's in the standard mode, the eight ohm bridged or four ohm stereo mode. So that's the one we tested at first. See if we get that power and here you go. Yes, we do. 81 and 74 at 14.26. Let's reset the dyno for the uncertified test. One kilohertz track again. 83 and 78, again, that's only five watts difference in the channels. You guys may see that's not exactly the same. I think there's a problem. Not a problem. It's not, not much difference at all as far as dB go. Dynamic, 115 and 110. As expected, the efficiency is dropping 50% at two ohm stereo. In order to change this amp to the correct setting, so here's the four ohm stereo, eight ohm bridge, two ohm stereo, four ohm bridged. We'll switch this so we can do the two ohm stereo tests. And according to the manual, when we have it in the optimized setting, 50 watts per channel is what it's rated at two ohms. So that's what we expect here. 50 watts per channel, certified, here we go. <laughs> Can't get much closer than that. 49 watts per channel at 14.36. Maybe if we would have had that 14.4, we would have gotten the 50 watts. So uncertified up to clipping. Yeah, again, we get right at it. Average channels together, it's right at 50 watts per channel. Dynamic. See what happens dynamically here. There's a little bit more of a discrepancy in the channel. 52 and 63. Let's check that efficiency. 54.6, so right around 55%. Now we're going to bridge the amp mono and run it at 40 hertz. Bridging amp mono uses the left positive and the right positive. And I'll show here how we do that. The left positive is actually the negative connection, and the right positive is the positive connection for your speaker. We'll flip it over. Make sure that we've switched it to mono. This amp is not tri-mode capable, so you have to choose either stereo or mono. You can't do simultaneous. Now the amp is rated 100 watts and 120 watts, depending on what mode you're in. We are in the mode where it's rated 120 watts, which is the 8-ohm bridged 4-ohm stereo mode. And here we go. 141, oh, 142 at 14.3. That's quite a bit more than the D100 that Steve Mead tested. I'm going to leave a link in the video description. You can check out his video. His amp did like just under 100 watts. Uh, uncertified 168. Good numbers. Dynamic. Can we bust 200? Yo. <laughs> yes, we can. 205. 14. 3.8, oh, 209, it jumped a little more. As far as efficiency, 40%. Yeah, pretty abysmal. But again, it's kind of expected. 
Now, in order to try the two ohm setting, we're gonna switch it over to the two ohm stereo or four ohm bridge mode. What this is gonna do is lower the rail voltage and the amplifier is rated 100 watts mono in this particular mode according to the manual. So again, we're at 40 hertz here. Let's try the test again. And yeah, close but no cigar. 93 watts, 14.4 to 1% THD. Uncertified up to clipping, and we do bust through that 100 watt rating, get 108 at 14.3. 32 year old amp here, no complaints for me. Dynamic. Getting up into the triple digits. 116, 14.42. Let's check that efficiency. 44%. Next up, let's hook it up to my ELAC bookshelf speakers, see how it sounds. We have the sound stream hooked up to the ELACs. You know, we gotta listen to some smoke jacket blues. Coast by Anno Domini Beats. I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it To my own domain Yeah I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots Skipping breaks feeling The original D100 from Soundstream Was a Nelson Pass amplifier So I had to ask the question online Was the D100 2 Nelson Pass or Wade Stewart I couldn't remember when Wade came to Soundstream But we actually found a post online and Wade mentions it. He says he copies Nelson's design in the 2 Series, and he just fixed a thermal runaway problem, but overall it was still a Nelson Pass design. So here, once we take the bottom off, you can see the switches here for the ohm load and also stereo mono. And I'll show here with the bottom on so you can see what they look like. You can also see the three amp fuses that are for the channels. And yeah, not a whole lot else going on. This one does squish the transistors underneath the board between the heat sink. And here's some of the original caps. You can see here 35 volt 2200 microfarad and 16 volt 2200 microfarad. There you have the test for the Soundstream D100 II. Hope you guys enjoyed the test. I enjoyed testing it. I'm gonna put it back on the shelf and pick up the next stamp. So stay tuned, find out what that is. Big D, till next time. I'm out of here. Thing sounds pretty good. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. As you guys have seen before, I like to wrap up to protect my amplifier. So this Soundstream D100 II, I believe I'm gonna keep it. So I'm gonna wrap this one up to protect it. My fancy saran wrap here. I'll leave a link on Amazon if you want to pick some up to wrap your amplifiers. It's like Christmas time all the time in the OSS Labs. Protection for the win. Pull it nice and tight. Pull the sides nice and tight. There you have it, protected for the next time.